Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is a more regular forecast update from Central Australia and Coobapiti this morning, Monday the 23rd of June 2025. There's quite a bit to get through today, severe weather expected to be a problem across southeastern Australia in the coming couple of days with high snowfall accumulations expected on the higher peaks, damaging winds also expected to be a problem and plenty of rainfall for regions across Victoria, New South Wales and parts of South Australia. Looking forward we've got plenty of rainfall also on the cards in the northeast and coast of New South Wales and some rainfall also expected up in far north Queensland and the usual wintry weather coming in for the southwest of Western Australia as well. All the details on these weather systems plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things today with the huge multi-vortex low pressure system south of the Great Australian Bight moving into the Southern Ocean this morning and that's expected to be the problem system bringing in that significant severe weather like conditions across parts of southeastern Australia. Temperatures are a little bit more milder this morning so I guess it is a bit of a double edged sword. Whilst we are expecting severe weather, the deep freeze that Southeast Australia has found itself in over the last couple of days is now coming to a close with the very cold temperatures kind of confining themselves into the mid-north mid coast of New South Wales this morning or into the mountains adjacent to, to the mid-north coast. Goulburn still freezing through a minus six degree morning this morning, but uh, comparatively a bit warmer into the higher peaks and through parts of Victoria's this low pressure system approaches. The severe weather is beginning across parts of the higher peaks as well. Wind observations at Threadbow and some of the ski resorts around Threadbow are now well in excess of 90 kilometres an hour with gusts up to 120 kilometres an hour, but that is again reserved for the highest of uh, mountain peaks there. Uh, strong winds expected or continuing to occur and are expected to uh, increase across parts of the high peaks of Victoria and into the uh, agricultural regions as well. Mount William blowing at 60 kilometres an hour this morning and then Melbourne Airport 54 kilometres an hour with gusts up to 87 kilometres now this morning coming out of the north it really is quite a windy morning the cold front system doesn't really look that strong as we zoom out on the satellite imagery and the internet connection looks to be a little bit poor here but uh, you can see from what is loading in the satellite imagery isn't showing what, what we would expect to be a significant severe weather bringing impact but uh, the storm here is quite powerful and it is moving into the southeast corner of Australia at quite a speed this morning. We are expecting the rainfall to begin to develop across the South Australia coastline in the coming couple of hours it is now starting to extend across the southern reaches of the Air Peninsula. We are expecting rainfall to then move into the Kangaroo Island uh, area through around lunchtime and then in through Adelaide uh, later tonight into early tomorrow morning. Showers are going to be widespread through the South Australian coastline right up towards the Juna, in fact, probably up to about Nullarbor. So there's going to be plenty of rainfall to go around for coastal regions through the Air Peninsula and into the Spencer Gulf and a couple of drops of rainfall expected as far north as about Roxby Downs and Lake Torrens as well. Rainfall accumulations are expected to pile in into Victoria later on tonight into early tomorrow morning. We are expecting some good rainfall accumulations as well into the agricultural regions of New South Wales and heavy falls are actually expected onto the western leading edge of the Great Dividing Range. We're expecting some healthy rainfall accumulations in those regions as well and the towns that are coming to mind right now include Young, Parks, Orange and right up towards Dubbo and even as far north as Lightning Ridge we could be seeing a couple of showers out there as well. Rainfall through Victoria is going to be pretty disappointing over the next 24 hours. It will begin to pick up along the coastal regions through tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening especially into the southwest coast. Tasmania are expected to be in kind of a flurry of showers through today and into tomorrow, right out towards Wednesday. Rainfall is also expected to be relatively disappointing compared to what New South Wales is going to pick up into the more mountainous regions of New South Wales, uh, into Victoria. However, snowfall accumulations should make up for the lack of rainfall through some of those areas. So the key takeaways right now is rainfall expected to extend across South Australia, uh, much of the western leading edge of the Great Dividing Range through New South Wales, and in fact some heavier falls are expected through uh, Tuesday and Wednesday through those regions and Victoria kind of missing out on the best uh, rainfall uh, that is coming through from this weather system here. The west coast could see some good drops of rainfall here and there but uh, for the most part Victoria isn't going to be expecting anything crazy in the way of rainfall accumulations and Tasmania as you would expect from a system like this especially one with a lot of low pressure centres as what we're seeing on the satellite imagery are uh, some good rainfall accumulations expected down there as well. This is a map of three-day rainfall accumulation. So this is total rainfall expected from the European forecast over the next three days out to uh, Thursday morning with the heaviest falls, as you can see, into the mountainous regions of New South Wales and parts of Victoria and the agricultural regions of New South Wales running away with some pretty significant rainfall accumulations as well. Heavy rainfall accumulations also expected across parts of South Australia and then down in towards Tasmania as well. The heaviest falls will be along the coast. However, we could see some good rainfall accumulations further inland as well. Adelaide is looking at about 40 to 50 
50 millimetres of rainfall in surrounding communities such as Port Lincoln and up towards Port Augusta. A couple of drops of rainfall expected here and there with a maximum of about 10 millimetres on the forecast for either location. Sejuna is looking at up to about 25 millimetres because of their exposed uh, kind of location. Mount Gambier looking at about 40 millimetres as well. Warrnambool as well along the south coast of Victoria looking at about 40 millimetres too. Melbourne closer to about 30 but then falls between 50 to 125 millimetres can be expected across some of the higher peaks of Victoria and into the southeastern corner of New South Wales as well especially through those mountainous regions and whatever doesn't fall as rainfall is going to fall as snowfall. High snowfall accumulations are also expected through some of these locations as well. Three day snowfall uh, accumulations on top of the nearly 70 or 80 centimetres that some of the ski resorts have had so far in the last two weeks we're looking at about a, third, a further 30 to 40 centimetres across the high peaks of New South Wales and between 20 to 30 centimetres across the higher elevations of Victoria as well. Tasmania isn't going to be seeing as much snow as you normally expect from a system like this because some of these low pressure systems are expected to pass closer to the Great, uh, to the Bass Strait and into the Great Australian Bight. We're expecting Tasmania to be comparatively a little bit warmer than what New South Wales and Victoria are going to be temperature wise as this weather system rolls through. It certainly is a very complex low pressure system. I mean, if we take a look at this on the satellite perspective here and really zoom out, there are swirls and bends in the satellite imagery everywhere. This is a very broad low pressure system with lots of entwined uh, low pressure vortices. It really is quite a complex system and it is going to be creating some pretty significant severe weather. It's also quite an intense one with a pressure of 984 millibars this morning. So with the wave height and the swell threat is also going to be there. And just considering the size and the magnitude of this low pressure system as well, we're certainly going to be seeing some big waves, which could be an overlooked threat across the South Australian coastline and then of course into the Bass Strait come Tuesday and into Wednesday. The largest waves are actually expected to occur through tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening through the coastal regions of South Australia and we could be seeing waves well offshore up to around 9 to 10 metres in some locations so certainly some really big swells can be expected from this weather system. That'll about do it on the weather front for uh, southeastern Australia. Looking a bit further forward beyond this weather system here, we do just have that rainfall across the northeast coast of New South Wales. So of course, we're going to be seeing a series of cold fronts move through southeast Australia, as you would expect for this time of the year. But that's about it on the severe weather type thing. So I'll leave it here. And we're just going to briefly touch on far north Queensland with a little tropical twist in the weather forecast this morning. So whilst there's not much occurring up in far north Queensland right now, just a few showers coming out of the southeast, funneled by those southeasterly winds that are still going, would still feel a bit tropical up there that's for sure even at this time of the year it's not totally unusual that we see rainfall accumulations into the triple figures as what we're seeing here on the forecast models into the last week of june and into the first couple of days of july rainfall accumulations are certainly elevated to what you would normally expect for this time of the year but it isn't totally unusual the southeasterly flow generally doesn't pipe down until about late july i find which means rainfall accumulations to the degree that the forecast models are suggesting are still possible for another four or five weeks until that uh, kind of Southeasterly trade flow pipes down for a couple of months and then it returns again in November. So the dry season up in far north Queensland sometimes completely fails to arrive uh, or is very, very short lived. And that's another uh, thing that they have up there, uh, just that shorter dry season compared to what the remainder of the top end of Australia uh, normally sees. But rainfall accumulations looking healthy into the last week of July falls up to 150 millimetres on the forecast models right now. Again, pretty much reserved for the mountainous regions around the Casbury Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest. Kansas is looking up uh, at up to about 45 or 50 millimetres of rainfall. Again, just a couple of days of moderate showers will do that there. Nothing serious in the way of some intense rainfall coming through. And it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing convergent zone activity either. So this uh, forecast here is a pretty straightforward, just showers and unpleasant weather coming out of the southeast. There isn't an awful lot uh, to be concerned about here. Flash flooding and riverine flooding is not anticipated. It does take quite a lot to put far north Queensland underwater and 125 millimetres spread out over five days is certainly not going to be enough to do it. So there is no threat of flooding or no concern of flooding or uh, any kind of uh, rain-based damage that we're expecting from this rainfall. And I do feel like I need to stress that even at this time of the year uh, when the rainfall still remains on the forecast, but it isn't uh, a, a kind of a prominent thing. Uh, it really isn't a concern at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations will also steadily decline over the coming couple of weeks as well. Panning south now to the northeast coast of New South Wales, this is another little bit of, I guess, semi-tropical rainfall that's coming through here. We are expecting some rainfall to kind of funnel out into the Tasman Sea and then uh, uh, trade winds coming out of the southeast are going to bring that rainfall into the northeast coast of New South Wales. It is going to be spread out quite evenly over, over a few days into the last couple of days of June and into the first couple of days of July. Some solid rainfall accumulations can be expected north of Forster and Taree with some heavier 
rainfalls expected around the Coffs Harbour and the Lismore sort of area. But again, coastal-based rainfall not really concerning, and it is going to be coming through spread out over a number of days, with a couple of days of heavy rainfall and a couple of days of more limited or lighter rainfall. So there, again, there really isn't much of a concern here, but for very much saturated communities along the northeast coast of New South Wales, especially north of Kempsey up to Coffs Harbour, with up to 100 millimetres of rainfall on the forecast, I feel like this is definitely a good thing to be talking about at this point in time, just kind of getting everybody in the know that there is a little bit of rainfall on the forecast up here. There isn't anything to be concerned about, but don't expect it to be a dry week next week, especially after about the 27th of June out to about the 4th or the 5th of July. Rainfall accumulations will be piling in in a pretty steady manner at that point in time. And like I said, there'll be wetter days and there'll be drier days. It looks like Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the 30th of June out to the 2nd of July will be one of those wetter periods. And then uh, kind of the weekend looking a little bit drier as well. And then rainfall piping up on Thursday, Friday this week for a little bit of a uh, preliminary wetter period. Uh, it will be a little bit confusing this weather, especially for this time of the year. It's not normal that we see showers of this magnitude developing across the northeast coast of New South Wales. But like I said, nothing, uh, nothing too concerning at this point in time. The one factor that uh, makes me want to talk about this a little bit more and kind of really hammer home the details on this weather event here is the sea temperatures offshore from the northeast coast of New South Wales. They're still very warm, 23 degrees, pushing 24 in places, especially as you head further north, which means there's going to be plenty of evaporation as these showers get funneled ashore into the coastline. There's lots of convective energy out here. So when these showers get over that warm East Australian current, they will be able to intensify and develop it in a much more uh, kind of free environment compared to where they would be at this time of the year or further offshore, which means rainfall accumulations are more likely to be on the upper end of the forecast or even exceeding it by a small manner. Sometimes the forecast models, especially at this time of the year, fail to take into account the sea temperatures offshore from the northeast coast of New South Wales. That's why the last rainfall event in May was so intense compared to what the forecast models were suggesting. It wasn't a forecast model or computer error. It was because those sea temperatures were just so much warmer than what the forecast models were expecting and as such there was heaps more evaporation, which is why it's very important to have a look at all aspects of the forecast modelling when you're making a forecast like that for the northeast coast of New South Wales. Panning over to the southwest of Western Australia now to finish this video off. We still have a couple of showers moving through into the south coastal regions between uh, Walpole through Albany and then across towards Esperance and around towards Cape Arid. Rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be too intense from these showers here. There are a few heavier ones coming through and accompanied by some strong wind gusts as well. Winds are still pumping out of the southwest and the west in places between 40 to 60 kilometres an hour with gusts up to 80 or even 90 kilometres an hour in places. It is a lot cooler, calmer and more collected across much of the interior southwest western Australia though with temperatures into the low single digits overnight and into the Perth metro area as well. Whilst it wasn't as cold as what it has been in the wheat belt throughout the last couple of days, still a cold start and a couple of showers still lingering here and there for coastal regions to start off your Monday morning. There's definitely nothing uh, more significant in the way of rainfall coming through into the southwest of western Australia though not at least for the next couple of days. In fact it looks like it might clear up a little bit this week and we might see some warmer temperatures developing through Thursday and Friday as another cold front then begins to develop through Friday. This cold front isn't expected to be anything too strong, however, some slow moving rainfall bands developing along the southwest capes through Friday could bring some heavier showers and maybe some decent rainfall accumulations here and there. The real weather is going to come in through Saturday morning for the southwest capes and then into the Saturday afternoon for the Perth metro area. It's not going to be a strong cold front or weather system at this point in time, but it is going to be slow moving, so some healthy rainfall accumulations can be expected here and there, and some good rainfall accumulations also expected into southern parts of the wheat belt, extending about as far north as Lake Grace at this point in time and on the forecast models. A few showers are lingering offshore through uh, Saturday and into Sunday. Rainfall is going to ease off uh, briefly through Sunday and into Monday before another cold front approaches and this one looks to be quite strong to start off July offshore from the southwest coast of Western Australia. Some good weather is expected to come through and when I mean good weather I'm talking more in the severe weather kind of thresholds at this point in time through Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Details are still a little bit un unclear on this weather system here coming through Wednesday and Thursday into the 2nd and the 3rd of July respectively and you can see between other major forecasts modelling there are some pretty big discrepancies with the GFS which I find to be a little bit less accurate this time of the year across southwest western Australia calling for nothing on the forecast whilst the eastern weather is going ham with a pretty strong low pressure system moving through into the southwest and quite far north even for this time of the year the low pressure centre moving into the Perth metro area. If this does occur we will see some good rainfall accumulations across the southwest with falls between 30 to 60 millimetres uh, over the course of about two or three days and another northwest cloud band cannot be ruled out as well if we do see a weather 
ecosystem like that develop with some great rainfall accumulations also expected into the Gascoigne and the Pilbara. At this point in time, it's still a little bit too hard to tell. Another strong cold front coming through Friday and Saturday, the 4th and 5th of July. It looks like we will have that brief week to week and a half long period of uh, dry weather conditions across the southwest uh, starting from about now. And then that significant severe weather will return just in time for July to start. It looks like we're going to have maybe a week or two of some significant cold front slash severe weather activity across the southwest of Western Australia. And you know what that means in southeastern Australia, the severe weather will be two or three days behind what occurs over in Western Australia as well. So just because I'm not forecasting the regions of that uh, at this point in time, don't think that the severe weather threat is completely done there because it looks like we will be seeing some co uh, good cold fronts coming through into the first and the second week of July across southeastern Australia. On that note, that's going to have to do it for today. I do hope everybody has enjoyed the video, found it informative, and if you have, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The support lately has been very much appreciated, and again, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them, so again, their support is much appreciated as well. Regular weather updates will return next week. I'm hoping to make another one tomorrow down in Streaky Bay, uh, south of Sejuna in South Australia, and then I'm going to return across the uh, Nullarbor uh, into the Perth, uh, or back into Perth, hopefully by around Thursday, Friday, or Saturday at this point in time. Still a little bit unsure and taking it day by day. And then from then on, it looks like next week, regular weather updates will return. There'll be no more out in the field stuff, which I do appreciate the feedback on, and I do appreciate the support on those videos as well. That's all for me today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.